Looking for a micro front end architecture for your Next.js 10 applications? You've come to the right video. I'm Jack Harrington, at Jahur on Twitter, and this is Blue Collar Coder. What I'm talking about is module federation, and it's a new feature that's baked into Webpack 5. And what it means for you is a new way of sharing components or really any JavaScript code between any Webpack applications. Next.js 10 is Webpacked, so we all get to benefit from that. Let me paint a scenario for you. You've got a microsite architecture, meaning that you've got multiple Next.js 10 applications, all of which contribute to one coherent website. They're run by different teams, and getting components to be shared between those applications can be rough. An example of this would be a header. You always need one consistent header throughout your entire experience, but how do you do that? Well, in the past, we would go and build out the header as a shared NPM library. But getting that deployed would mean first pushing a release of the header out to NPM, and then subsequently versioning all of the applications and hoping they more or less get out at the same time and provide a consistent user interface. That's not great. What module federation allows you to do is expose a header from one of those applications, along with all of its associated files and dependencies, and then consume that live in any other application, just as if it was another component. It's an amazing feature. If you haven't seen it yet, it's gonna blow your mind. I'm really excited to bring it to you. But before we begin, I wanted to spend a second to talk about my friend, Zach Jackson, and applaud him for what is an amazing achievement of getting the module federation functionality into Webpack 5 and released. It's the culmination of years of effort by Zach. And it's really, really impressive. It's a lesson to any of us who have ideas and want to get them out there that you need that dogged, relentless determination to get it out into the real world, and you need to do that over time. Having an idea is not enough. You have to go and do the work, and Zach has, and it is amazing. I applaud you, Zach, and for anyone who's watching this, please spend the time, send a note to Scripted Alchemy on Twitter just to say thanks if you're really excited about this module federation feature. All right, without further ado, let's go into building out two Next.js applications and get them sharing components using module federation. So today we're gonna to create two different Next.js apps, and then we're gonna get them to share a component, which would be the navigation component. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this module federation Next.js MF library to extend a Next.js app that we're gonna create right now. So I'll create a directory called Next.js MF test, and then within that, use create next app to create home. Now, home is gonna be our first app, and it's going to share out a navigation component to another app called PDP that we'll build pretty soon. So this one, we're gonna tweak manually. So let's go back to our little recipe and first do the yarn add. And then we'll change the resolution of Webpack to Webpack 5, so we move from Webpack 4 to Webpack 5. And now we've gotta go and remove node modules and rerun yarn. Now we've got to go and create two files. The first is nextconfig.js, and there's two options on this. You can do a remote version or a consumer version. The remote version is the one that exposes components, and the consumer version is the one that consumes components. So because home is going to expose a nav, we're going to use the remote version. Now let's take a look and see if there's anything we need to change. So we need to change this from test one to home. And for the moment, we're just gonna get rid of this nav. 
from components. Now, the next thing we need to do is create the pages underscore document.js file. So we'll grab the one for remote. And we'll paste it in here into pages. And everything looks good in there. I don't need to change anything. So let's rerun this. Okay, looking pretty good. Standard Next.js app. So let's go and pare this down so we can see the difference between the home and the PDP app. And then just save that out. Yeah, looking pretty good. Okay, so let's go and create our nav. Create a new directory called components. And then a file called nav.jsx. And then I'll create a nav. And make it styled a little bit. And then finally export it. Now let's bring it into index. And put it on the page. All right, looking pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is to create the PDP app. So we'll go back up a directory and again, use MPX create next app to create PDP. So let's close a bunch of these files. Now we've already brought in this library. And one of the things that happens when you install that globally is you get a CLI command called Next.js MF. So let's run that. So this is telling us when we're in a Next.js directory, we can use this upgrade command. So let's do that. And then you give it a port number and we'll use 3001 for that. All right, now it's already made some changes. So let's go take a look. In package.json, it's now putting the server up on 3001. It's added itself as a library. It's gone and created a new file called nextconfig.js, just like we did before. It's set that name to PDP automatically, yay. It's added a remote, but it's commented out. So actually let's uncomment that. And then change this to home because we are going to use it as a remote. And it's also added a document, great. And thankfully it's added a script tag in there. Let's uncomment that out. And that actually is right because it's got the right port number. And the last thing we wanna do is before we run this, remove node modules. And also we need to expose nav from home. So let's go do that. All right. So let's restart that server as well as start up the PDP server. And we'll take a look. Now the PDP server is putting out a nice Next.js page, as we expect. So let's trim that down a little bit. Get rid of the footer, get rid of all the styling. Man, there's a lot of styling. Okay, looking pretty trim. So now let's go and bring in the nav. But in this case, the name of the app is home. So let's do that. And it's uppercase nav. And we can just drop it in there. Looking good. Let's try out a change. Ah. 
Oh, that's already done on home. Let's try on PDP. If I hit refresh, I don't see any changes, but if I recycle the server, I should. And now I see the changes. Awesome. So we got this nav sharing between applications. But does it also work with some of the advanced features like static site generation? Well, let's give that a try. So I'm going to first create a route. We'll call it products. And then within that id.js. And we'll just create a simple product page. And then export that. Well, let's take a look and see if it's there. Yep, it's there. That's cool. Let's go and add our nav. All right, looks good. And it's in Times New Roman, but that's because I haven't put any of the styling in there. So let's do the static site generation stuff by first getting the list of paths for the, all the products. So we need to use this get static paths. See, so yeah, there's no fallback. And then give it a list of all of the products. And for each ID, create a new object with params. And then the ID as a string. Let's get rid of this. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we got to go get the props. And what we're going to do with this one is just take the context params and turn those into props. So now ID comes in as a prop. And we can put it on the page. Let's take a look. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. So we, now we need to actually build it statically. So the first thing we need to do is yarn build. All right. Let's see. Has it built those files? Let's see. Yeah, it did. Okay, great. It's got the different product files. So now we need to export that. So we'll create a new script for that. And we'll run that. And that will have created an out directory. So let's go in there. And then on port 3001, just run a simple static server. All right, let's try that out. Very cool. So the homepage looks good. And now we've created HTML files, all of which have that code from that remote entry. How cool is that? So Next.js with Module Federation can support client-side rendering, server-side rendering, and static site generation all in one system. And on Next.js 10, how cool is that? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something new about Module Federation or how to integrate it into Next.js 10. It's really exciting and it's cool that it's so easy, but I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear your thoughts, your concerns, any comments that you have, be sure to put those in the comments section down below. Be sure, of course, to like and share this video with your friends, hit that subscribe button, click on that bell, and you'll be notified when new videos comes out. But if you wanna be notified a day earlier, just sign up for our newsletter. There's a link to that in the description. You should also 
join our Discord server, and there's a link to that as well. You can just ask us these questions live and in person. It's a great growing new community where we can talk about these kind of cool advanced architectures and really just any kind of front end topics. However, in the meantime, from me to you, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.